yes, thank you. I am the new director of the JPC, and I'm very excited to be here. Um, so, let's see. I, I did prepare a little speech, but there's a lot of, of, of things to update you on, and I guess the most important one has been that I am here, and I'm new uh, to... Uh, the Denver community as well. So I am very excited to learn about all of you and get to start to get to know uh, all of you. Um, and also very sad that uh, Jerry had to leave us, but he's doing great things in uh, Cuba now. And he sends his love and, uh, you know, he, he would like to be here, but he's here in spirit and uh, we are happy for them. Uh, over there in Cuba, because they, they now have a great uh, advocate and in, in, in social justice activist over there. So, um, many of you have supported DJPC for years, and some of you decades. Uh, DJPC is now 36 years. Uh, so, um, your dedication has uh, been what has constructed this organization. And you are the symbol of solidarity here in Denver. And it is your struggle for justice and peace and anti-imperialism that has contributed to this uh, work here in Denver. And I'm honored to be standing here before you. And uh, even though my daughter keeps trying to come here, you can join me, Luna. Tú puedes venir conmigo si quieres. Um, uh, I, it uh, just makes sense to pause for a second to recognize the wonderful work of Jerry, as I mentioned a couple of minutes ago. He is a priest that happens to be from the same order, a uh, priest that I had my first communion with that uh, had my confirmation, that married Aaron and I. Uh, so it's, it's been an interesting uh, path that we have crossed again. Uh, Angel Torreyas and Margarita Navarro, who uh, are not with us anymore, but uh, some of you were able to uh, get to know them, um, have had a great influence in my life uh, growing up and going to uh, Bataola and uh, being in the choir and being part of uh, the Bataola community where they founded a great, great program that helps women and children. And it's a very disadvantaged uh, Barrio Popular in Managua. So if you ever have a chance, go online and look for Friends of Bataola. And uh, you can see the legacy of Angel and, Mar and Margarita. And when I met Jerry and we talked about this, it was just so exciting to see that our lives had been crossing uh, in the past. So that was very, very interesting and emotional. Um, so I will continue. <laughs> um, so we, um, uh, we, both have had a struggle for ju social justice in Latin America, and that has been a commitment that he uh, started here uh, uh, in DJPC, well, with all of you, of course, and, uh, and I owe him um, a big debt uh, for setting the path for me, and now I am uh, feeling at home here at DJPC. It also makes sense to pause and consider the meaning of the transition in leadership. As I step into Jerry's, pl uh, Jerry's place, is in any change of leadership, this is a moment for reflection. This is the time uh, to spend listening to you. I'm here for that. Uh, the members and our uh, supporters. It is time for me to listen to our Denver Latino community, and uh, I see a couple of our Latino community members here that just arrived, and thank you for being here tonight. Muchas gracias por estar aquí esta noche con nosotros. Les agradezco porque es muy importante para nosotros que la comunidad latina se integre a esta organización. It's very important for us that the Latino community also gets involved in this 
uh, or, uh, in what we're doing for Latin America. Um, it is time for me to listen to the activists, many of you here. I, I, I seek to learn more from you. Um, and uh, some of you have been involved, very much involved in, in DJPC, and I, I, I appreciate your struggle and your commitment to the different issues that you bring to our table. Um, it, is not, it is not time for great changes. You know, we do good work, and DJPC is not broken. It's just it, uh, we need to... I, I don't need to fix anything. Uh, we just need to uh, consider the visions of the organization and find the appropriate steps to continue our caminata, our path, um, together. Uh, in terms of the vision for the organization, I'm not going to offer you new and bright and, and a new bright future, uh, bright future in a promised land. The vision of the JPC is the vision of its members, the dedication and solidarity, the deliber <coughs> deliberating democratically to decide the world we want to live in. What can I? What I can offer is a bit of my story. I like to tell you a little bit about me, because some of you have been interested in learning more about me. Uh, um, I, uh, I want to share with you where I come from, who I am, and what I believe in. As we work in the coming months to reflect our vision as an organization, I want you to trust that in my person and in my experience, we chart a path forward. I was born in the Caribbean coast of Nicaragua. My mother is from North America, from Minnesota here in the U.S. She traveled to Nicaragua and she still lives there. She is a leader in the feminist, health, indigenous, and environmental struggles. My father was a Mosquito Indian. He was a member of an indigenous population of Nicaragua and Honduras, in the border region of Nicaragua and Honduras, whose people and culture uh, um, honor natural, no, not national boundaries, leading to repeated conflicts with the efforts by states to impose order on common, pe common people always people's ways of life. My family was exiled by Somoza, the dictator, to Guatemala for part of my childhood. And we returned to uh, Nicaragua in the 1980s to escape the repression in Guatemala. And then I joined the Nicaraguan revolution. I grew up in Nicaragua, and I am a Sandinista, and I still consider myself a believer of the anti-imperialist and the anti-capitalist Sandinista struggle. Even if many of, even if I have many differences with the contemporary Sandinismo, transformed into Danielismo. My adult life has been dedicated to social justice and human rights. My first big job was collecting testimonies from survivors of massacres during the Guatemalan Civil War. I worked for the UN and the Catholic Church, and I reported, and our reports identified the victims, places, and perpetrators of human rights violations. As payment, those same perp perpetrators assassinated the Archbishop of Guatemala when the report was released. After Hurricane Mitch, uh, that destroyed many communities in the Pacific coast of Nicaragua and Honduras, in some places in Guatemala, I committed to the struggle of people from my home communities as they sought to put the, their lives together again. As a result of my work, I 
met some other people that were doing solidarity work and reconstruction work in Nicaragua. And that's how I met some people that encouraged me to study a master's program in the United King Kingdom, and I studied at the Institute of Development Studies at Sussex University. Uh, after this, I also worked in an organization very much like DJPC. Its name is the Central American Women's Network. And they did solidarity work, and they continue doing it till today, and dedicated their cause to the Central American women that worked in the maquila sector. And, uh, and, they, and they continue uh, supporting the work of uh, organizations that are organizing in the maquilas. After the UK, I moved to New Orleans, where I learned a new trade and joined a new cause. I committed to social justice for immigrants. Everyone knew that Hurricane Katrina devastated New Orleans, but not everyone knows that Hurricane Katrina also displaced local populations and drew in a great number of Latin American immigrants. And they are as vulnerable and often of used workforce, and they have been rebuilding New Orleans since Katrina 10 years ago. And also the rest of the Gulf Coast. I work for immigrant and workers' justice as an interpreter, fighting efforts to criminalize and deport immigrants, and seeking justice for workers who suffered theft of their, wage, of their wages by unscrupulous employers. In 2014, I moved to Denver along with my husband, Aaron Schneider, and my lovely daughter, Luna Serena, who is two and a half years old, who keeps me very busy in all the best ways. I am thrilled now to be part of this community, the DJPC community and the Denver advocate community, and I'm looking forward to shape the vision of DJPC in communication with all of you. So every, mo every moment of transition, uh, there are certain steps to take to move DJPC forward, and I need your help. As you know, we hold salons every Thursday, uh, every third Thursday of the month. We've had, we, this year we had uh, several salons. We talked about, we have a documentary on Cuba. Um, we, um, I'm forgetting some of them, but we, huh? Oh, so, yeah, sorry. <laughs> we just had Juan de Dios. Uh, that uh, uh, an activist from Guatemala, indigenous activist. We had Claudia Pasipas recently talking about the case of the Rios Mont and also the Ayotzinapa case. So those are just examples of the uh, salons that we hold every month. And it's your space. It's for you to decide what you want to listen to, what subject you want to bring up on Latin American issues. So I invite you again to remember that this is your space and this is a conversation that you want to bring to the table. It's, it's your space and um, use it. Help me organize it because, as you know, the JPC is a one-person staff, part-time staff, and I am very proud of my board of directors because they are very involved and they support me in every way. So, um, I um, also, being part of this community in other ways, um, you can also help me with the mailing that we're going to do in December to get more support from our members and get more people interested in becoming part of the JPC. Um, the, and um, also, we can support the, 
the struggle and work that other people are doing, like the American Friends Service Committee that's really dedicated to the immigrant costs and to stop deportations and to close those terrible detention centers that uh, some of us have been able to work with immigrants inside the detention center and we know what the conditions there are and we should continue raising awareness about it. Um, so send me your ideas. Uh, I'm on the third floor of this church. So whenever you want to come by, I'm usually here on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and I'll be here more days when time allows it. Um, but yes, please come in, knock the door, let's have some coffee, go to a coffee shop or have some tea here. I'm here to listen to your ideas. So I, I want you to remember that the struggles that we have engaged with are the struggles that you want to be part of in Latin America. And they are part of what your partnerships with Latin America have been. Some of you have lived there. Some of you have been very active over there. That you have communities where you worked, where you, where you have families. That you want to bring the issues that these people are experiencing. Uh, some of you are very involved with the Mind Watch, which we do here. And we are very involved with Peru and Cajamarca and our partners in Celendin. So um, if let, we want to continue supporting that struggle and raising awareness of the issues of open mine, uh, uh, mining, uh, pit mining and what it does to the communities over there. And like our friends Maxima, uh, that you've heard uh, horrible experiences that she's faced. So. Um, and she is resisting, and it's through our support that she is able to get that international solidarity that's very much needed in those local struggles. Um, I'm not gonna extend uh, much more. Um, I, uh, I, these are just some ideas, but I just want to, you to remember that it's very important to continue that solidarity and um, something, uh, a book that's called Crusade for Justice is a, ve a very important book for newcomers like me that learn from your struggles. Uh, so that's a very important part of history and it's um, something that if you have, a book that if you, ha I'm sh pretty sure <laughs> many of you have read it, but if you haven't, uh, please do so, and you, you'll understand a lot of the struggles that are embedded in this community and that help us continue that struggle that we face and bring other struggles that we believe in. So uh, I will stop there and let the ceremony continue, and I thank you very much for supporting me and helping me, and I will do my best to... Uh, continue our struggle for peace and justice for everyone in Latin America and in the world. Thank you.